Hello everybody and welcome to Perech of Zion, that's chapter 27 of the book of Shemot. And in this chapter we are going to be introducing you to yet more exciting details about God's house, the house of Hashem, the Mishkan. Yes, it was very exciting. You see that in Perech of Zion we had the menorah and God commands us that the menorah must be a ner tamid. A constant flame burning. Now, the Torah also says it went me'erev ad boker from each afternoon, from evening until morning. There's various explanations to how that worked. The simple explanation is that constant flame means every single day it was lit. Our rabbis even tell us that there was a great miracle that occurred that one of the flames would always remain, remain burning, even after all the rest of the oil burnt out, it continued, and the Kohen would use, would be able to light from this one each time. So this was a constant flame that we had in the Mishka. Now, another, another exciting detail over here, we learn about the outer altar. So if we look at the courtyard of the Mishkan, the courtyard of the Mishkan, here's the courtyard, it's outdoors, there's a big altar with a long ramp to walk up there, and the Kohen would walk up and bring the pieces of the animal that was being offered on a fire up there on the altar. And, of course, it had poles to carry it, and it had different utensils, which we're going to learn about, to... You know, like just like you have a barbecue grill, well, the Mizbeach was like a big barbecue grill in a way that they were barbecuing the meat. So the meat that went on the Mizbeach, though, was holy and it was being offered to Hashem. Now, why does Hashem need an offering? This is discussed more in the book of Ayikra, but I'll mention briefly that some offerings were people eating them in celebration of the blessings of Hashem. So Hashem asked us, to show our gratitude by celebrating and eating and putting part to Hashem. Also, there are some reasons for the Karbanot that are very big secrets of the Torah, which you don't understand. But Hashem gives us a mitzvah, and we do it. Hashem says, I enjoy seeing my children follow my commandments. Even though Hashem doesn't eat meat, of course, but when a Jew brings a gift with his whole heart, it makes a special korban. A korban comes from the word krav, kuf, resh, bet, korban, and the shoresh is krav, which means to come close. When we bring a korban, it brings us closer to Hashem. So this altar brought us closer to have a relationship with Hashem when He came and gave a gift on the altar with your whole heart. And so some details about the Mizbeach, okay, was that the Mizbeach was a special measurement. First of all, it was made of Atzei Shittim, which was the special type of wood, acacia wood, which was used throughout the construction of the Mishkan. Now, where did Jews get all this wood? A beautiful Midrash tells us that Yaakov Avinu, our forefather Yaakov, planted trees from Eretz Yisrael in Egypt, these Atzei Shittim, and he told the Jews, his children, when you leave Egypt, take this with you. He was already planning for the redemption, and the Jews looked at those trees as they grew all those years, for 210 years, and it always reminded them that one day they would get to go free. And they used that wood here for the Mizbeach, and it was five cubits. A cubit is about... 18 inches long. So it's over a foot, between a foot and a half, and some people say it was 24 inches. So there was, they were pretty big. So five amot by five amot, okay, and three amot tall. So it was a square and three amot tall. And it had four horns, not horns like animal horns. It had on the Mizbeach, if you look in this picture over here, you can see that the tops had these protrusions, square block-like protrusions. These were called the horns of the Mizbeach that Hashem commanded to make. Also, there was something called a michbar. A michbar was a netting made out of copper 
netting. You had to be a special craftsman to make this beautiful netting that went around the side of the altar on all the sides. Okay? There was also four rings in each corner on each side, and they put poles that, to, ca to carry it. Now, this altar was wood, as I mentioned, but interesting detail. If you look at this picture over here, it looks like a goldish color. Now, it wasn't gold, but it was a material called nechoshet, copper. Okay, it was a metal. There was metal coated on the whole mizbeach, was coated in a special metal called nechoshet. Now they, there was an, also an altar inside this building the, called the mizbeach hazav, the golden altar. The one outside was made of copper. Okay, next we move on to discuss the courtyard. Okay, the courtyard of the Mishkan, as we said before in a previous video, was very big. Some details, it was a hundred amot long. hundred amot from end to end. Okay, and it was, um, what, it wasn't one whole wall. It was, there were 20 pillars on each side, one, two, three, four, etc., and there were 20 copper sockets on the bottom to, for the pillars to stand in. And there were silver pegs, okay? And silver hoops on the top that were used to hold a bar that went on the top to stabilize the whole thing. And there was a net made of white twisted... Um, twisted material that was hung throughout the whole Mishkan, okay? And the pillars on this side were, were 50 amot long, okay, straight, and in the front there was 30 on each side, there was, sorry, there was 15 on one side and 15 on the other side, making a total of 30, and the remaining 20 was open. As you can see, they had a special screen, a special doorway made of the multicolored fabric with lions and eagles, and that was set a few amot in front of the door so that you would come in and you would enter from the sides. So that was blocking the view directly in, but you would come in from the sides. Okay? And and that is the details of the parak. So remember, the details of the parak of Zion is firstly about the menorah. The parak begins with about the golden menorah and how it's lit um, from evening until morning, and then about the um, mizbeach, the copper altar, and then about the courtyard and its hangings. And now, for a silly story to remember Perk of Zion. And here is my silly story. Hello, everybody. I am the Cohen Gadol. Ow! Oh, my neck is burning. Ooh! Um, Cohen Gadol, what's the matter? Um, well, it's Perk of Zion, chapter 27, which is chapter neck. Chapter neck? How does that work? Well, the N is a 2 on its side. The E is a vowel that doesn't count. And the number 7... Well, the number seven is the k sound, like K or CK. Uh, I don't get it. How does that work? Well, because the K sound has hidden sevens inside. You see? One seven, two seven, three, backwards seven. You see how many sevens are in the K? Oh, okay. So 27, neck. Uh-huh. Two and k, seven. Got it. Okay, what does it have to do with this chapter? Well, I'll tell you, I was climbing up to burn the, to light the mis menorah one day, ouch, and by accident I stuck out my neck too far, and my neck got burnt, woohoo, so remember a warning, do not stick your neck out too close to the menorah when you light it for fire safety. Uh-huh, okay, and what about the mizbeach, what is, what is that about? Oh, very simple. You see, when you're climbing up the altar, there was a very special ramp that went on top of the altar. But the problem was that there was no, there was no guardrails on the side. So everybody had to be sure 
not to run up to altar so they didn't fall and break their neck. Actually, one time it happened that somebody fell and they almost broke their neck. So make sure that you keep your neck safe when you go up in the altar. Uh huh. Okay. And what about the copper hooks and the courtyard? What does it have to do with necks? Oh, well, you see, um, we for the courtyard of the Mishkan, we had a whole bunch of standing, standing, uh, very tall people there, and they were standing there and. We needed to hang the curtains, so we got a whole bunch of people, we stood them up, Uh huh. and then we hung from their necks, we hung a curtain. Ouch! Ouch! They're hanging curtains from my necks! Ouch! Oh no! There's 20 people on each side with curtains hanging from our necks! Ah, oh, we're choking, we're choking! Okay, we'll get you wooden pillars instead of your necks. Meanwhile, I'll keep your neck strong until we find some wooden pillars. Where can we get wooden pillars from? I hear Yaakov brought some wooden pillars out of Egypt. Oh, wonderful. Now we don't have to hurt our necks hanging the tapestries. And that was a silly story, of course, to remember that in Perak Chav Zayin, chapter 27, the Kohen Gadol is commanded to light the menorah from evening until morning. We're commanded to make a copper altar with a ramp, and we're commanded to make a courtyard with 20 poles on the length, and back at, of 100 amot, back of 50 amot on each width, hung from wooden poles with white twisted fabric outside. Thank you for watching.